Jay Gruden left his quarterback out there, his, his starting quarterback. I'm, I'm using air quotes around starting quarterback. He left him to the wolves. I mean, he was getting eaten alive that entire preseason game. And RG3 eventually was knocked out of that game. In my humble, this was all a, a part of Jay Gruden's plans. He never wanted RG3 to be the starter. He wanted Kirk, Kirk Cousins to be the starter. So by leaving him in the game and effectively taking RG3 out of the mix moving forward, he got the quarterback that he wanted. Bruh, for real? Now, the Washington Redskins are pretty good at home. They're 5-2 and two at home. The only problem is they're the 2004 Appalachian State Mountaineers. Can't buy a game on the road. They're 0-5 right now. I want winners. They had a chance to take over the comp, the, the division, excuse me, by defeating uh, the Dallas Cowboys on Monday night. They let that opportunity slip through their hands. The Dallas Cowboys and the Washington Redskins both had an opportunity to get in front of the, the national public, to get in front of the world in prime time and show the world that the NFC East wasn't what everyone was making them out to be, which is God awful. And they did the exact opposite. Bruh, for real? Whoever does not win the NFC East, all three of those coaches need to be fired. They need to clean house and they need to start over a new. I want winners. I want people that want to win. It's embarrassing. And I'm, I'm not a fan of either of those teams, but it's embarrassing to watch. Bruh, for real? It's the All Things Sport Podcast. I'm Damian Banks. He's Pierre Banks. We'll be right back with our top five after this commercial break. The All Things Sport Podcast. We go back like spinal cords and car seats. With Damian Banks and Pierre Banks on Spreaker Radio. Welcome back to the All Things Sports Podcast. We are having a blast once again on our second episode of the All Things Sport Podcast. And we've already gave you the hot topic. We gave you bruh for real. Next. The All Things Sport. Top five sports themed video games. Now, this top five could go on for hours can go on for days we're going to try to keep this segment kind of brief but not too brief for you new kids for you kids fifa is in the top five it's not in my top five i, I don't I, you know i don't play fifa some of the games i'm going to give you uh, it's definitely going to show my age um i don't care if you say i'm old i still look good you know um like like cam say i'm young i'm pretty i, I look good i hit hard i'm in the best shape of my life so wait a minute wait a minute before we begin I need to know, is Zelda considered a sports game? I mean, cause Zelda, you, you got the bow a, and you shooting like the little yeah. animals to try to, is that mm, game? Is that, it could, I mean, that's, it's, that's stretching it. That's stretching it. I don't think Zelda, now Zelda, great game. Great game. When I, when we first got that gold cartridge, I thought I was in heaven, man. And shout out to my to my big brother, Telly Savalas. We call him Kojak. Yeah, I know. His name is Telly Savalas, like Telly Savalas. And his nickname is Kojak, like the show Kojak. He worked at Bird's, which is a grocery, a local grocery store in Durham, North Carolina, when we were kids. Bought us a Nintendo game system. Bought us five games with that Nintendo. And The Legend of Zelda was one of those games. And The Legend of Zelda... I think it got wore out. We blew into that game so much, man. Like put alcohol on the inside. Put alcohol in it. You know all, all the old tricks to get those eight track cartridges to play. And my top five is NES heavy, not NES like Nas, but NES heavy Nintendo Entertainment System. So without further ado, Pierre, number five. What do you know about Duck Hunt? Oh no, man, wait a minute. Duck Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Duck Hunt is my number five game, man. Duck Duck Hunt was so fun. It was the, the graphics on that game was so bad, but who cares? I mean, it was like 1980 something. For that time, the graphics were great. You had to have a gun to play Duck Hunt. If you had that gun, now we all know, like you corrected me last week, like John Amos said, this is America, Jack. And you know, in America, we love our guns. If you had that rifle for Duck Hunt, 
Oh man, you were doing it big. And Duck Hunt, man, the, the best thing, the thing I like most about Duck Hunt was that dog. Every time you killed a duck, the dog peeked his head up and held the two ducks up to let you know that you did, in fact, kill those ducks. And if you missed the ducks, the dog would peep his head up and start laughing at you like, you're such a horrible shot. How could you miss these ducks? These ducks are not even going fast. How could you miss? And for that reason alone, Duck Hunt is my number five video game sports related i mean you were pretty good at duck hunt if i can remember correctly but i don't think it counts too much if you put the gun up to the tv screen and then shoot in the immortal words of both of our fathers hey 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 friend hey friend don't tell my secrets friend number four can i do a slash yeah you could do a slash i'm gonna go with double dribble double dribble and I'm going to go with a slash NBA Jam. He's on fire. I mean, you can't go wrong with Double Dribble or NBA Jams. Double Dribble, again, an NES game. NBA Jams was a Sega Genesis game. That people slept on Sega Genesis. I love Sega Genesis, but people slept on that, that game console. Double Dribble was so, again, graphics, horrible. So easy to steal the ball. So easy to dunk the ball. But the hardest part of double dribble was hitting the three-point shot, man. It's like you had to be at the right spot on the screen slash the court to hit that three-point shot on double dribble. And for NBA Jams, I mean, NBA Jam, I mean, what more can you say about it, man? You could get on fire and not miss a shot. I mean, it's like kind of being in a zone in real live basketball. Sort of like how Steph Curry is in a zone right now. It's like he's doing step-back threes. He's dribbling the ball up the court on his, on his knees like Curly Neal, throwing the ball over his, over his head and hitting unbelievable three-point shots. You could do that in NBA Jams on the Sega Genesis game console. Number three. Now, I struggled so much with number two, excuse me, number three and number two because you can interchange these, but I'm going to put this on as my number three pick. Mike Tyson punch out. For some people, it could be number one. That game, man, got great, great amounts of play in the Banks household growing up. And the, the best thing about Mike Tyson punch out to me, Pierre, was you had to do what boxers have to do. It was different opponents. You had to capitalize on the weakness of your opponent to beat them. So you had, you know, pissed, you know, Piston Honda, King Hippo, Disco Kid, Don Flamingo, Glass Joe. All of these boxers had their own, you know, weaknesses. And you had to capitalize on those weaknesses to beat those characters. So Mike Tyson punch out, if you could get past, you know, and this is not even like, you know, the Sandman, I load the same man on Mike Tyson punch out. I mean, like, come on, man. Like, I loathe, you know, King Hippo. I mean, you're gonna taunt me with being obese? Bruh, for real? <laughs> Number two. I'm putting live at two because during that era, Live 95, if you had, if you played with the Chicago Bulls, you can't lose. If you, if, if you playing someone in the NBA Live 95 and they pick the Bulls, you, you like, man, I'm not playing against you. Man, you got the Bulls, you got to pick somebody else. You got to pick somebody else. So I used to pick the Milwaukee Bucks because Ray Allen is not missing on Live 95. Glenn Big Dog Robinson is not missing <laughs> on Live 95, man. I was in high school when that game came out and I skipped a lot of homework, you know, playing Live 95 over my one of my good friends, how Sherman Lacewell, affectionately known to us as Shoulders, you know, we, we played Live 95 so much. His, mo his mom came came into the room was like, you know, you guys still playing that game? It'd be like 2 o'clock in the morning. We have school the next day. We're still playing Live 95. So, you know, for that reason, I'm going with Live 95 as my number two pick. Number one. You know who it's going to be. I think it's number one in everyone's top five of video games is going to be the Madden series. Everyone played Madden. John Madden, as you know, legendary head coach for the Oakland Raiders. You know, in, in, in the late 80s, EA Sports, it's in the game, um, came to John Madden with an idea you know, to do a football game. He hopped on board, and the rest is history. You have one of the biggest tournaments 
in the world, million dollar tournaments, you know, for John Madden. That game has came a long way in, in those years. And you look at it today, man, it's so realistic. You know, how much realer can these games get these days? So Madden, I'm not even going to give you a long winded explanation. I don't have to. It just is. It's like when uh, a parent tells, uh, you know, a child to do something and they ask why. They simply have to say, because I said so. So number one is Madden, because I said so. Pretty good daggum top five, Damien. Not going to lie, man. You you had some real bangers on there. Uh, I think it's safe to say that some of the, the games you had in your top five, I will definitely have in my top five um, since Zelda is not considered a, a sports game. I guess I, I have to leave that off my list. Mortal Kombat. I mean, I've seen a lot of jujitsu and all that kind of stuff in the Olympics, but we'll go to the jump right into my top five. Number five. Got to bring it in with Knockout Kings 2000. I, def- I definitely remember Knockout Kings. Knockout Kings 2000 was is one of the best games overall but f- as far as as boxing fighting game goes one of the best of all time man ranks right up there with with the punch outs with uh Buster Douglas <laughs> where you had to fight Iron Head at the end the Rocky video game and I used to go on there and I fight with everybody man from heavyweight on down to the lighter weights and I can even remember getting to a certain level on the game and then out of nowhere here comes Sugar Shane Mosley and you had to try to beat him to add him to the game man and the best feature was how you could create yourself and go through the ranks and, and build up to become a champion and I used to always make myself an older dude man with a lot of wrinkles scruffy beard scruffy hair and then my, my nickname was always the same, man. Baby face. <laughs> Number four. Double dribble. You gotta double dribble deserves to be on every list if you're talking sports video games. Double dribble set the trend. I mean, it was out before Bulls versus Blazers. It was out before the NBA Live series. Definitely paved the way for 2K series. But double dribble, man, I just I appreciated the way. That when you were playing the game regularly, the guys on the court would look a certain way. But then when you got close to the basket and hit shoot, <laughs> it would go to a whole nother screen and you can get somebody doing a, a backwards dunk or uh, any kind of dunk like that. And it just looked like a completely different person, man. It didn't matter if I were down by 15. I was always going to go in to, to try to dunk because I just wanted to see the, the screen look different and, and have somebody go in for a slam, man. Number three, Mike Tyson punch out. You, you got you got to have Mike Tyson punch out in there, man. And I'm not gonna lie, when you were talking about King Hippo, I started getting mad because the first few times I played Mike Tyson punch out, I could not figure out how to beat King Hippo. I didn't know that when he started or when he took that step back and raised that arm, you were supposed to punch in and hit him in the stomach. I didn't know. So I was trying to prepare to to evade his shots and, and get out of there, man. I, w- I was playing too safe. It was like De La Hoya versus Trinidad. I, w- I was trying to, to get out of there too soon without landing my punches. And uh, it was frustrating, man. He beat me so many times until I, I think somebody like yourself came along and, and guided me along the way and said, look, man, what are you doing? All you got to do is stand in the pocket and throw a punch when he throw that hand up. And ever since then, you know, my new nemesis has been Bald Bull. I still can't beat Bald Bull to this day. I have to get somebody to to beat him so I can move on to the next person, man. It's sad. It's sad, but it's true. Number two, the Madden franchise. Got to go with the Madden franchise. And I tell you what, I fell in love with Madden back with Madden 96, man. The the all Madden teams back then, and then I used to I used to pick up Buffalo and play with Thurman Thomas. If you got Thurman Thomas on the edge with a sweep and hit the sideline, you wouldn't catch in Thurman Thomas, man. The Madden games nowadays, man, they're they're still good, but I gotta say, man, they're a little too challenging. 
It's it's a video game. Take a step back, EA Sports, and allow us to have fun again. You got to make it so that on 4th and 30, you got a chance to get a first down, man. I mean, once they took that feature out, Madden lost some of his luster for me, and it it dropped it out of the top spot. Number one, the NCAA franchise. I'm kind of shocked, hurt. I'm really taken aback at the fact that this was nowhere on your list at all. The NCAA franchise made.